Google Data Studio is a great application that allows us to visualize our data and share these graphs and charts with our managers, clients, and stakeholders. In last episode, we talked about creating a simple chart and then making certain changes to it. Today, we will complete the whole report and much more in this special episode right after this. Welcome back. Today, let's continue the chart that we started building in our first beginner's tutorial for Google Data Studio. Here it is. This is the chart that we started building. I want to make a small change to it before I move on to creating the other uh, sections of this uh, page. What I noticed is these numbers, they, they are difficult to read. So what I can do is use a completely different chart instead of this, I'll go back to my bar chart. So what I'll do is I'll go to data right here and go back to selecting a bar chart. There you go. See how these are lined up in a much better way. So what I can do is go to styles and give different colors. So what I'll do first of all, the colors that are being used are red and a lighter uh, shade of red. So what I can do is click on uncheck the single color. Notice how now we have two different colors. I like to use blue for the unique page views and red for the page views. So I think that looks much better. And if I scroll slightly down here, let's see if I can add the numbers right on top of this. See it says show access title. Again, we've talked about this. It shows me the titles on these sides. I don't really want to show it at this point, but I'm interested in showing the numbers. There it is. First of all, I can do show data labels. And if I do this, you see the numbers are much more cleaner and visible and I can literally see everything I want. What else I can do? Let's see if I do stack bars. Maybe that's a better approach. I think I like this more. So we'll stick to this because I can actually read the whole numbers. So we have the red meaning the page views and then on top of it we have the uh, blue noting uh, the unique page views. But notice this is not cumulative. This is just another bar chart stacked on top of this. So you have to understand that. As you can see here, it says stacked bars. If I remove it, it will split them and make them parallel to each other. Let's see, 100% stacking. Okay, so this is not really very uh, intuitive. So I don't like this option. I'll keep it like this. I think we can... Uh, we can we can live with this. I think it's it's not bad. Though I, I really, to be honest, I like this one and I wish I could have the numbers really uh, show better. I don't know if there is a way to make the numbers smaller, but then if you print them, you won't be able to uh, make use of it. Okay, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stick to this one. I think there should be a way of rounding these numbers to Ks, though I'm not very sure how to do this at this point in time. Let me go down here. Mm, I don't think it's that intuitive. Okay, fine. Now, the next trick that I'll teach you today is I want to create a whole new one similar to this underneath it, but I want to uh, show uh, users and sessions. The easiest way, believe me, copy, paste. You just copy and paste. It creates the exact same graph. I go down here and then I go to its data and I make changes. So what I can do is I can just delete both. Click here. So in, instead of unique page views, I'm interested in, in sessions. Going back. And the next metric is I'm interested in users, the number of users.
that's great. But for the sake of this graph, I think I'm gonna stick to some other charts. I'll do the time series chart instead. Okay, one of the things we can do again, as I mentioned, is go to the styles and make sure that you say show points for series one, and then scroll a little bit down, show C, uh, points for series two, there you go and show data labels here are the numbers show data labels for the other one too okay okay that just shows where you want to uh, showcase your your axis here so I don't think I need this. Um, I think this looks good. There is a nice setting here which says um, a linear interpolation that you can uh, do. I'll stick to line to zero. And this is when the data is not available. Basically, if uh, in a certain month your data happened to be zero, do you want the graph to be very sharp or do you want it to be more interpolated? Okay, I think that's about it for this particular, um, uh, this particular chart. Now, let's create a third one. So I'm, again, I'm going to do copy-paste. Now going back, data. So my third one will include uh, the bounce rate and also the uh, exit percentage. So instead of sessions and users, I'm changing those to say bounce rate. The other metric is exit percentage there it is okay now that looks better see how when the values are um, not too close to each other you can actually read the numbers more clearly but the problem here with my users and their sessions is they are kind of very close and that's why the numbers kind of um, are almost touching so one thing you can do in that case if you don't like this you're not able to read it is to change it to the bar chart again and um, in this case I would like to uh, stack them on top of each other um, so by saying stack charts and also I would like to show uh, the axis title because that's uh, relevant to show that these are sessions Uh, for the axis and for the x-axis as well I'm showing the month of the year going a little bit up here to show the data labels that's the most important section where you can actually see so now I know these are my users and these are my sessions it's pretty neat I think I can I can live with this it's not that bad uh, obviously, really, it depends on your numbers. Sometimes the numbers that you have are a little bit varied, so the graph would look even better. Or you might decide to go with a completely different chart. Now, before I finalize this, we're almost there, I would like to add two more things. I would like to add a cumulative number of all the page views right here in this area and a cumulative number of all the unique page views underneath it. And notice how simple it is. All I have to do is say Control C, Control V on Windows. And while I have a copy of this, I'm going to drag it slightly on the left hand side. I can go into my data and click on this scorecard. That's a very important uh, field here. Notice what happened. It just automatically changed it, converted it into a cumulative uh, 
number of page views. So I have 3 million page views in the, in the past six months. Now if I do control C and control V again, I have another copy of this underneath it. Looks pretty, right? Looks good. But now I, instead of page views, I want unique page views. So I'm going to go to uh, the data metric here and modify this one in particular and say unique page views. That looks good. Now I'm going to do the same for sessions and users. Again, control C, control V, drag it slightly to the left, click on scoreboard. And the number gets automatically converted. The whole chart gets uh, converted to a sessions in the past six months. I'm going to copy and paste the sessions scoreboard or scorecard and modify this instead of sessions I'll go with users all right let's do the same thing for the bounce rate control C control V convert it to a scorecard the bounce rate is the one so basically what it does it it takes the first uh, metric and assumes that this is what you want. It's slightly too big, so I'm going to go and select it again, paste it. This looks good. Instead of bounce rate, I'm going with percent exits. All right, so now this is almost complete right mm -hmm. now what we can do is the following uh, these might not be properly aligned so what I will do is I'll select all of them Okay, now this looks perfect. What I need to do now is teach you the last trick of today's episode, which is uh, taking a step back and using what we have here as the date range. I click on it and I am going to place it right here. And this is my date range. So basically, I want this date range to apply to all the charts that are existing on this page. And I can do that. First, I'm gonna go to the styles and choose a different color for the header. I'm choosing a little bit lighter. Um, sorry, not here. I'm choosing a little bit lighter blue uh, to, uh, to showcase uh, this uh, field. So it's saying select date range, going back to date range. I can actually decide what range that is. And as I mentioned before, I'm going a uh, six month uh, period, a period of six months. So August until uh, end of April and see how it automatically shows it. But now we've made a slight, I wouldn't say a mistake, but because the way we were doing the tutorial, all of our fields here, as you can remember, when we talked about the charts, if you scroll down here, the uh, date range for this chart was a custom one, which means each and every chart was going to have its own date range. But what we want is to apply this whole uh, date range, the one that we just created on top, to all of them. So the tedious work that we have to do is click on each of these graphs and make sure we select Auto. So now, go back here. Again, this is my second chart. Auto. Third chart. And don't forget as well that you have to do the uh, score, uh, the scorecards as well. So I'm going to go one by one. I'm not sure if you can select multiple ones. Um, I've seen it in the past on a few of them. I don't think it's going to work out. Let's see if it applied to both of them. 
Oh, we did. Perfect. That's smart, Google. I love you. So we could have actually selected all of our charts and automatically went from a default date range of custom to a default date range of auto. So this is it. Obviously, the charts and the numbers didn't change because it's the exact same period. But now notice what happened. I can view it. I can view. Remember, we were all the time we were in edit mode. Now, now we are in the view mode where we can actually hover over these uh, chart areas, over these bars, and actually read more information around the more visible uh, numbers. And one thing to note, if I decide to all of a sudden, I just want to see my May uh, 2017 um, uh, data, I can simply apply it to the date range here on top and all of my charts and scorecards underneath would show me the updated metrics. So I think this looks good. Because we're doing month, it would apply, it would be more applicable if we were to go, let's say, three months and um, try to look for March, April, and May. That would look better. That would, la that would look as it's supposed to be because this uh, particular a report was based on the month of the year. Remember, this uh, chart, this particular report, in my opinion, is very essential. It's a very high-level overview of your website performance, and it just tells you information about your page views, unique page views, uh, sessions, users, bounce rate, and exit percentage. And this is all you need to know at a very high level. Obviously, when you don't have anything around e-commerce, it's just basic uh, visibility and uh, how much your website is influential. So that's it for today's second episode of Data Studio, Google Data Studio for beginners to intermediate. We want to go step by step and learn all the tricks and tips that we can get from this very, very important uh, application by Google. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give it the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel where we talk about digital marketing, all the applications. We learn the tools all the time and keep up with the trends. Until a new episode with me, Danny, take care.